What's going on guys? Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com here with Hector Berrios, my pitching coach in the Mets organization. And we're going to talk about today three analogies, three pitching analogies that make it really easy for the pitcher to grasp as a coach. When he talked about these analogies, it made it so much easier to grasp and understand and implement and do what I was trying to do quicker. And if you're a coach watching, this is going to be really great for you guys to steal these analogies because they're really cool. We're talking about the crazy walk analogy, the ledge analogy, and then also the tractor trailer analogy. And we're going to get into that in one second. But I want to show you something really cool that Hector came up with. He created, he invented the Pro Command Target right here behind us. It's a life-size catcher with a bunch of different gloves. The gloves are the same size as a, a catcher's glove. You can see all the stitching and the laces in the glove so you can really focus in on where you're trying to throw that ball. Because in a world of technology and velocity these days, all we hear about is trying to throw 100 miles an hour. Pitching command gets overlooked a lot of the times, and this is just a great tool for guys. You know, you're, all your pro guys are pitching on this. If you don't have a partner to catch, you know, you can throw it on a net, throw it on a fence, throw it wherever, easy to carry, not super heavy. Uh, really great tool, something yeah. really cool you came up with. So yeah. uh, I definitely you. recommend checking that out for sure. But let's get into the analogies, the three analogies. Start me off with the crazy walk analogy. So the crazy walk analogy, stand right there. Okay. And I asked you earlier, if you see me walking down the street like this, would you think anything of it? No, All right? You would not so think. Good. You would not think that I. But the minute you see me walking like this, let me walk over the mound. If you see me walking like this, you're gonna say there's something wrong with this guy. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because in the game of baseball, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the hitters as an example. The hitters have an advantage over us pitchers because they have they hold the bat with both hands. So the bottom hand is always attached to the bat, and when they go stride, they, their front side still stays closed, where we have a hand that has a mind of its own, and the hand just wants to take off. Once that arm takes off, elbow and hand, it takes the shoulder with you, right? So now, all of a sudden, the shoulder is out in front, and I'm no longer connected to my backside, and that's the objective of this. I want this shoulder. You see Kershaw, you see Bueller in this day and age, they're here. But you see that shoulder is still connected. There's a gap that they close here. They don't let that gap, right, take them off the backside. And everybody talks about staying back, but how do you do it? Okay, now getting back to this. If I walk here, God put me on this planet to finish my right foot with my left hand. And once that was finished, my next stride comes. So pitching would be the same thing. We like to call it dumping, dumping. And here, I'm still on this side connected. And now I'm able to use my legs. It gives my arm time fire use the big muscles and protect your arm show me what you showed me before with when the hitter if they go and they finish walking i thought that was a cool okay visual. so the hitter is here if if he strides here now he's in a good position it's just like if i walk if i just took this foot back and i put my hands in a normal position i would be taken off just the same way it and that be. and as pitchers we talk about you know getting that separation too if you're connected too much you don't have any separation your shoulders are going with your hips and you're throwing with all arm yeah. vice versa if you get too much and leave your arm back, which that'll transition us into the ledge analogy, <laughs> then you're going to be dragging your arm. You're not going to be able to command the baseball. You're, not, you're going to be losing velocity, putting a lot of stress on your yeah. arm. So talk about the ledge the, the analogy. Le the ledge is I just go to the, to the back of this mound here. I pick any ledge uh, at any park I'm with, any stadium, and I just kind of place my left foot on the ledge, and I let the other one hang. And you just know if you, look at that, the gravity's already affected me. So if I just take this foot and go out, and my hand out, my head goes out, I am at the mercy of gravity. It's gonna pull me off the edge. I'm in trouble, because I'm probably gonna break a leg or something at the, at, the, at the bottom of this. But once I get here, and I start with my lower half, my lower half is a flexible hip. Look what naturally happens to my head. I am not pulling my head back to the, to the mound. I'm actually going forward, but I'm going forward with my hips allowing my head to get back over my backside and that gives me time to get my arm into external rotation which is that hip and shoulder separation everybody talks about if i have my trunk a little in front which is the thing that i'm trying to get my pitcher to avoid now i become a trunk thrower my trunk is delivering the arm versus the arm the leg delivering the trunk the the trunk delivers the arm that's great and you talked about um grabbing onto the to the, the ledge so I, I left that one out so <laughs> if i do this and i start with my lower half I roll here, I'm going, boom, I still have a chance to, to grab onto that ledge. That is what we talk about, giving your arm time in order for it to stay connected to the body. And now again, let the ground up throw the baseball, using the big muscles to protect those ligaments, those tendons. Transferring the energy from the ground all the way through your kinetic chain up through your fingers. It's, that's great, and I love that analogy. The last 
analogy was the tractor trailer analogy. Tell us about that one. The tractor trailer, you have to think, uh, you know, big, big, big wagon, you're in the middle of it, there's nothing bracing you, holding you back. You don't know what the guy, the driver is gonna do. If he was to step on the gas, you take the, the truck takes off, what's gonna happen to, the, to, the, to you in the back of that cabin? You're gonna shoot to the back, you're gonna slam onto the doors, you're gonna gather yourself and finally be able to move forward. In this case, when we pitch, we don't have that chance. Ligaments and tendons are stretching and now having to come back and stretching. And over time, if you keep doing that, what's gonna happen? Something's gotta give. At professional level, you throw probably the most of any of the throwers. At the college level, you throw more than the high school, and then it keeps working its way down. In this day and age, it's a little changed, right, from the way it used to be with everybody play different sports. But in this day and age, with the amount of throwing you do, you have to protect your arm. Some people say that the arm wasn't meant to be used to throw, but I kind of differ in, in, in my thought process because how did Nolan Ryan last 27 years throwing a baseball? He did the same overhand right? But he had a different delivery than we see nowadays. How did Tom Siva last how many years? And Whitey Ford and John Lester in this day and age and Mariano Rivera, they all gave their arm time in order to be able to do what they've done for the amount of time that they did it. What happens is there's too many guys doing it the wrong way and something's got to give. And that's where we end up having the, the injuries that we see in the industry in this day and age. And that's like the ledge, going back to the ledge or the tractor trailer, if everything's going this way and you're, you're not gathered or giving your arm a chance to catch back up and be you know transfer that kinetic energy through your arm then you're dragging and you're going to lose out on command you're going to lose out on velocity and you're going to be putting more stress on your arm which eventually could lead to injury or just being sore all the time yeah. which is not great as a pitcher so uh, really great info i love it i want to talk some more pitching with you some more videos guys you could check out hector at hlb pitching on all the social platforms. Go give them a follow. We're gonna shoot some more videos here talking about pitching. So make sure you're subscribed with the bell turned on. This way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video because you're gonna to wanna to hear what this man has to say. I, I got to spend a half a season with him, learned so much. And just in the hour or so we've been here today, he's taught me a handful of new things that I never heard. And he's sharing a lot of it with you on these videos so make sure you stay tuned hop down in the comment section below let us know what you want to see in the next video or if you got any questions for hector or myself drop them down there we'll be happy to chat with you thank you so much guys we'll see you in the next video